Hello and welcome to more Timberborn. I have uploaded about a dozen YouTube shorts with Timberborn tips over the past few weeks. Now I know that not everyone watches YouTube shorts and therefore I have made this compilation video of the first 10 tips. Before we get into that, make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss any of my other content. Should you find yourself with a shortage of logs and you see a nice forest across from the river, dams, levees and platform are your usual suspects to cross. However, they are expensive and you are already low on materials or you might not even have unlocked some of these. In this case, you might want to opt to use small warehouses. They are considerably cheaper at a per block rate and they can span three blocks at once. You can easily path over them to cross to the other side. We have all been in this situation. We have a dire need for more fertile land as we need to expand our food or wood production. Simply blowing a hole in the middle of some dry ground and placing a water dump over it is a quick way to resolve the issue. Should you not have unlocked dynamite yet, fear not, we can accomplish a similar result with four levees and a set of stairs. Now we can make sure our beavers will no longer starve. Sometimes a drought hits a little harder than anticipated, or you just didn't have enough time to prepare for it. You see your food and water drastically decrease and you fear for the survival of your beavers. If only you had a little less beavers around, because you do have enough resources for a handful of them to survive the harsh drought. This is when we introduce the promised land. We plop down a temporary district and we move the majority of our population to this new land. Make sure you keep enough beavers in your original district to restart your food and water production. Sorry beavers. This is going to be a rather quick one and it's for folk tales only. After the initial start, once you get your first farm up and running, there is absolutely no use in keeping any of the berries around. The berries take a precious fertile real estate. They take 12 days to grow just three berries and give our beavers no well-being points and therefore no extra benefits. We should mark those areas to be cleaned up and we place some nice carrots or potatoes there instead. Water is of utmost importance for our beavers to survive the droughts. Initially, we only have access to the small water tanks for storage. When we place three of those small tanks in a row, they basically have the same footprint as a large water tank. Once we unlock the large water tanks, we can easily replace a single row of three small ones with a large one. Our water storage will more than triple from 90 to 300 for the same exact space. Now our beavers don't have to be thirsty anymore. Our beavers have the unique ability to reach down endlessly to place and build things. We can use this to our advantage in all sorts of situations, like when building a staircase down a cliff or when placing explosives. Unfortunately, they are not able to remove resources while reaching down as we need to be on the same level as the resource we want to remove. In case we need to reach somewhere that's a little further from the cliffside, we can use the suspension bridge to get where we need to be as our beavers can place and build stuff right under the bridge. Preventing our land from drying out is an important step to take before the first drought hits. We start the game with dams unlocked and we should use this to our advantage to block the river off. Placing the dams downstream will get you the most bang for your buck. We can also path over the dams to reach the resources on the other side of the river. Dams will raise the water level to around 70% of the block height before it spills over. When the drought hits and with our dams in place, it will take a while longer before our river dries out and our crops wither. Let's take a quick look at how to easily boost a new district so we don't have to wait for distributors to deliver the goods. At the border of our original district, we can place some warehouses, log piles and even some water tanks. We wait until our original district has completely filled those up and all we have to do then is to remove the district gate from one side and place it on the other. Now our second district has immediate access to all of those precious goods. In order to transfer power, there are two options in Timberborn. The most obvious one is placing power shafts from the source to the destination. However, the other option is not so obvious. 
Buildings connected to power sources and shafts will also transfer power to other buildings. This also works vertically and will save you from making lots of power shaft spaghetti. Explosions in this game are one of the most satisfying things to trigger. Blowing up a plateau to lower it one block is just awesome. However, placing the explosives can be a little finicky due to the limited range in which our beavers can place them. An easy way to determine where to place your paths is by starting in a corner and dragging the explosive square. The corner is exactly from where we can reach all of them. Now we can draw a path and place the rest of the explosives. More tips will be coming, but for now, please have a look at this awesome Roseburg time-lapse video. I will see you all soon. Bye for now.